Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to FTL's Advanced Edition once again. So, in today's episode, we're going to be attempting something incredibly stupid, and you will get to see why in just a moment. So let's jump into this shenanigans and see what we're up against. Jump into a new game here, we're going to be playing with, of course, a Type-C ship, but namely the Stealth Cruiser Type-C, which is, in fact, a terrible misnomer. For one thing, it's covered in desert camo, so it's exceptionally obvious at all times, which really makes it a terrible choice for stealth. And for a second thing, it has no stealth system. <laughs> so it's really not a stealth ship at all, because it doesn't have stealth. It also doesn't have shields though, which makes it even less good. <laughs> no shields, no stealth, and it has worse engines than the Type A does. So there's a couple things here that are really working against this ship. It does have a couple benefits to kind of compensate for that problem. It has a shield overcharger drone, which allows it to temporarily uh, increase a Zoltan shield layer by one. And an anti-drone drone, which allows you to knock down enemy combat drones in the early game. It also has long-range scanners to help you avoid ha hazards like asteroid fields, which will just absolutely obliterate this ship. And you do have an interesting weapon arsenal, giving you a charge laser and a mini beam, with both, both only take one power, which is pretty nice. These are... This is an improved version of the normal charge laser, as is the shield overcharger. It takes one power less for each of them. But beyond that, this ship doesn't really have much else going for it. You start with minimal power, so you can barely keep all of your important systems running, and if you need to keep a drone online too, you have to turn off other things. You have a like, decent doors loadout, so you can airlock things pretty effectively. You have got yourself a fairly effective crew to start off with, giving you a slug, a rock man, and a human. Not bad. But overall, this ship is just lacking in some pretty significant ways, like not dying immediately. <laughs> so we'll see if we can turn something in out of this event, but we're going on a hard difficulty, which is going to be a disaster. Obviously, with Advanced Edition content enabled, otherwise you can't use the Type-C ships anyway. And we're going to see what happens. Before we get going, we need to rename this sucker, so let's rename it. The Simo H name is actually named after what I believe is a Finnish sniper, who has had, I suppose, the record for most kills in one... Uh, one conflict with something over 500 sniping kills which is outrageous but we're gonna rename this thing to the VSS High Noon and we're gonna rename our crew appropriately and there we go we have Desperado on board we have Bronco on board and we have you can be Rustler there we go we've got ourselves a collection of uh, Western themed names. I could name it something like Wild West, but I like High Noon better. So, let's go here with the VSS High Noon into Certain Death. Certain? Into Certain Death, and we'll see what happens. Oh, here goes nothing. The data we carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. We'll need supplies for the journey, so we have to make sure we explore each sector before moving on to the next, and of course, we have to get to the exit before the pursuing rebels can catch us. All right, well, first things first, we're going to move our Rockman to our human's position. We want Bronco in the helm and Desperado in engines, mainly because that way we don't have a penalty from the slower move speed of the Rockman. Since your pilot rarely leaves his post, having someone who's nice and solid there, who's also immune to fires, is quite a nice option to have. So, let's get jumping, see if we can find anything here. We have two distress beacons and a store right off the bat. Let's go see if we can get some nice free loot from having Slug and Rock crew already. First thing we find, the distress signal is coming from a small space station orbiting an uninhabited planet. Their satellite defense system has gone haywire and their repair crew can't approach without being fired on. They're looking for help to fix or disable it. Well, let's promise to help and see what happens. We have no options, we can simply fire on this defense system from a distance. Alright, I was hoping the shield plus drone would do something, but no such luck there. Let's just shoot them. Wow. We fire a few volumes from a distance, and it's clear the defense system is no match for our weapons. However, the station does not seem happy with our solution. We salvage what we can and jump before there's trouble, getting two missiles, a drone part, eight scrap, and a backup DNA bank augment. That's actually pretty cool. It means that we can never lose our crew in the DNA bank, even if our cloning system is destroyed. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to keep that. Probably going to wind up selling it to try and get ourselves shields or something more quickly, but that's a really nice thing to get from an event which was really not supposed to give us anything. So, as you arrive here, they say, <laughs> I knew someone would fall into our dastardly trap. It appears this distress beacon was nothing but a decoy for a pirate ambush. And they have a drone, so we're going to have to power off our med bay, I guess, turn on the anti-drone. Please shoot that guy down. You're not... <laughs> I missed him. Oh, good. Please don't just miss him continuously. All right, we've taken a hit in the engines. Are you going to shoot him again or not? Anti-combat drone, what are you doing? All right, we're taking a lot of damage. You missed him again. Awesome. So far, this thing has shown me no value 
Fire a mini beam in there, trying to knock it offline. No, it's still going. We still haven't shot it down at all either. Nope, that's another miss. All right, I'm starting to feel that this is how the rest of this ship is going to go too. Let's take another shot in this way to try and knock that drone system offline. There we go, and we're to fire a mini beam up through here, which might be able to kill them before they get their shields back up. Yes, it is. Goodbye, pirate rigger. I think that anti-combat drone missed five or six shots there, which is phenomenally bad. Ship explodes, giving us one fuel, one drone part, and 18 scrap, though, so that's better than nothing. But if that's what this run is going to be all about, this is going to be an absolute disaster. What do we find here? A small platform orbits the near this beacon. It looks like a refueling station of some sort, and is cheerily broadcasting reasonable prices in a spectrum of frequencies and languages. Well, let's dock, then. The platform seems to be malfunctioning. It could ignite at any moment. Eh, let's dock and refuel. We're able to safely refuel and get clear before the station explodes, giving us five fuel. You'd think you'd be able to get scrap from that explosion, too, but apparently not. Alright, let's jump over here and see what else we can do, then. What's all this, then? We come across a rebel-automated scout ship pursuing a civilian with weapons engaged. Obviously, we help that civilian. And what do they have to throw at us? They have a charge laser, which is going to make an absolute mess of our defenses, and a bomb of some kind. So if we can't get in there quickly, this is going to suck. We're going to try and use the Shield Plus drone, see if that overcharger will actually help us at all. We should have enough time to charge it up at least one time here before they can fire that chain laser. So that's not going to give us a whole lot of chance to survive this damage, but it should be better than nothing. And we're going to try and knock some damage into them before they can do too much to us. That's two misses in a row. Phenomenal. Small bomb took the shot there, so it doesn't matter anyway. And thankfully they were able to miss our helm, so that's better than nothing. We have a mini beam charged up, so we're going to fire again immediately and hopefully get a bit of damage in them. Knock the shield offline. Perfect. Now we can use the charge laser to its best extent when the charge laser... Come on now. Thankfully with the overshield online, so that's better than nothing. When the charge laser has no shields to block it, it's most valuable, because that's when you can just take shots every five and a half seconds, which is really nice. Otherwise, it tends not to do a whole lot. Ship breaks apart, and we get a missile drone part and eight scrap. We contact the civilian ship. We find out they were a science vessel. They thank us for saving them and offer us a reward of one fuel, two missiles, and 18 scrap. All right, we're up to 52 scrap, which is not terrible. Oh, hang on. You need to get your position saved. You're going back down there. There we go. Save those positions. We don't want to have people changing places all the time. Turn off the shield. Power up the O2, because why not? With 52 scrap, we're nowhere near our objective here of acquiring ourselves shields or any other kind of defensive system, but for now, it'll have to do. We're going to let our O2 regenerate a little bit, I think, and we're going to have to jump into another fight. So yeah, letting our O2 regenerate is definitely a good idea. I will see you guys again when it's done, because it will take forever, given we only have level 102 right now. So be right back. There we go. All right, let's keep moving. We have 52 scrap. We have not a whole lot of options here with regards to not fighting things. Let's hope we get lucky and find someone who's very badly defended. Nope, mini beam. That's bad news for us. An especially well-armed pirate ship approaches us, saying, Hand over one of your crew members, and the rest of you can go free unharmed. But that's not going to happen. We're not going to surrender our crew to the slavers. We're going to murder them. They're going to try and board us and murder us, though. And we can't do much if it's sending a mantis over. So we're probably in trouble. What we are going to do those, turn off the O2, and turn on the shield drone again to protect us as much as possible from impending death. And we're going to have to send both of our crew into weapons to try and protect ourselves against this boarding mantis. So that's going to be a thing. There we go. Get ourselves powered up. We have our defenses up. They're going to fire a laser, though. And unless we get really lucky and it misses us, which it didn't, the mini beam gets to do some free damage, knocking out our drone control, meaning that drone is no longer doing anything for us. Hopefully, though, one of these lasers will hit. There we go. Now we can at least hit them through a couple different rooms here. Surprisingly enough, that's not hitting the teleporter, which is weird. Let's mini beam them on the other side and see if we can hit all four rooms that way. No, I guess it really doesn't want you to do that. Is there any way we can hit four rooms here? I want to hit the shields in particular. Nope, doesn't look like it's going to happen. Alright, now we're going for weapons, helm, and shields. Please knock off the mini beam. Perfect. Now it's going to take us a lot of effort to try and get this drone back online to make sure we don't constantly take even more damage from these lasers. But there's not much we can do about that right now. This game, this ship rather, is a series of unfortunate events as you try to not die. Let's lay down some more laser beam through there. They want to surrender and give us a mantis, which might be really good for us. We need money right now, so surrender is not an option. While what we're going to get is nowhere near as good as getting an early game mantis like that, if we don't get money, we are going to lose. We're already down almost a third of our health and like two jumps. <laughs> so there we go. The slave ship is destroyed. Then we'll continue the evil trade. Many lives were probably lost on board that ship, giving us one missile, one drone part, and 20 scrap. All right, let's get you back over to engines there, Desperado. And uh, let's turn the O2 back on so we don't suffocate. Should have been doing that earlier. We're going to wait till we get back to higher oxygen again, most likely, since nothing here is looking particularly promising. 
but that is basically what we're at right now. So I'll wait till our air comes back again, and then we'll be back momentarily. And the air's back. All right, let's keep moving. This is going to be a very slow run through if it's taking us this long at every beacon, but we gotta do what we gotta do. So let's see what we find over here. A ship with conspicuous pirate markings is orbiting a nearby moon, broadcasting a simple message claiming to have equipment available for sale. We don't have enough money now or any way to get enough money quite yet. If we could sell the shield, anti-drone, and the, the system, we might be able to get 120 scrap, but we're just going to attack him right now and see if we can't get a bit more money and then find a legitimate store where we should be able to buy a system if we get lucky enough to find one. Let's attack him before he can attack us. He has a boarding party already on its way, which is bad news for us since we're already badly injured. We have to send our crew over there to deal with it. We're going to turn on the shield drone, because otherwise we are going to be taking tons of unnecessary damage. Here we go. Get them in there to defend us. Get that mini beam ready so we can hopefully knock out one of those weapons. Please, drone. Hurry up. All right. Well, that did nothing, basically. <laughs> Charge laser. Go. All right. At least it hit. So we're going to fire the mini beam through here. Knock out one of those weapons at the very least, and they try and surrender, offering us three fuel, one drone part, and eight scrap. We're not going to accept their surrender, though. We're going to try and murder them, do our best to do so. And there we go. More damage coming in. Knocks out our drone. Of course it does. Of course it does. And it sets it on fire. Cool. Let's start venting those rooms. Let's go quickly repair our clone bay. Not that it immediately matters, because we do have that DNA bank, so we're not going to die instantly. But we are in a bit of trouble here, and they're going to take another shot at us. Please don't hit anything important. Hits an empty room. That's better than nothing, I suppose. We're going to mini-beam through here to make sure they keep that mini-beam offline. This should kill them as well. Good. Pirate Scout goes down. All right. So... With that, we acquire another one fueled missile and 18 scrap, which brings us up to 90, which is pretty good for maybe being able to actually get a shield system. Now, though, we need to close our doors, turn the O2 back on, and hopefully get some air back into this room so we can go repair that before our crew die. We don't have a whole lot of health left, so theoretically we could suicide them and use the clone bay to respawn them at full health again, but we'll lose a little bit of skill, and we don't have a whole lot of skill to begin with. I believe you lose a percentage-based amount of skill, so if you're on evasion or engines or shields, you might lose a couple more points than if you're on combat, we might only lose one. So it really depends on what your crew is trained in doing. As it is, though, we're going to send them back to their stations. No, it didn't do it properly. Oh, no, it did. That was weird. Why did he move away and then back? Very strange. Well, we have ourselves 90 scrap. What we need now to find is a store. So let's jump over this way and see if this harmless beacon manages to give us what we need. We detect two ships, one chasing the other. Scanners show the pursuer is a pirate. Well, unfortunately, we have no choice but to try and help the civilian ship if we don't... Oh, butts. <laughs> oh, butts. We have a pirate instigator here, which means we are just going to get wrecked. But that's our only option. We power up weapons and engage the pirate ship. Let's close these internal doors quickly. We're going to depower these systems to give us the shield drone as fast as we can to protect us against something. And we're going to try and start pinging off these defenses, because otherwise we're going to be here literally all day. So, let's fire this beam up through there. Unfortunately, there's no way to hit four rooms with it on this ship. The layout is just not conducive to that. There's a defensive up to block the damaging laser. That's better than nothing. Please don't hit my sheet, my weapons. You hit the weapons. Of course you did. Alright, well, that's really annoying because it knocked the mini beam, which is our only really reliable source of damage. There, it's back online now. Come on, shields. Oh, just barely in time. Alright, we are seriously at risk of taking a bazillion damage very shortly. Let's start powering up those weapons again, see if we can't get something out of this. This thing is going to power up a little bit too slowly to block the laser this time, I think. Yep, there it goes. Got through us, which means the ion stunner takes it out and does literally nothing. So, let us do the double shot charge in there. There we go. Mini beam up through weapons and shields. That should knock out some of their firepower and give us a better chance of blocking with this. Nope. Thankfully they missed us this time, which is amazing. We're going to take a ton of damage if every, en every enemy we have has a heavy laser, but thankfully now they're not quite as effective. This should kill them. Goodbye, Pirate Instigator. And we need to turn our O2 back on before we all suffocate to death. Pirate ship breaks apart, giving us three fuel, two missiles, and 19 scrap. And when we contact the civilians, we find out they were a science vessel as well. They thank us for saving them and offer us a reward of a fuel, a missile, and 15 more scrap. But we have enough, technically, now to buy ourselves a shield system if we can find a store that sells one. <sighs> I'll be back in a second once we have our oxygen regenerated. So, again, just one moment. There we go, bringing ourselves back up to full. Well, we seem to be stuck at 97 for some reason. Anyway... Look, why is it stuck in 97% air? Is there like a breach somewhere? Oh, no, there it goes. That's weird. Anyway, let's get out of here. We have 124 scrap to spend. We don't have a whole lot of room left to spend it. Let's jump over this way and see if we can find something before we run out of space here entirely. 
We spot a small rebel ship nearby. It seems to have been refitted for transport rather than combat, and doesn't seem to want to engage us or our ship. Let's demand they surrender their goods then, because we're terrible people and we prepare to secure their cargo by force. They don't want to try and fight and are trying to run away. They don't seem to have any kind of offensive drones, which is really nice. Let's actually they can't hurt us if we turn this thing on. Alright, this is perfect. Turn on the shield overcharger, which should be able to block those heavy lasers pretty nicely. They'll get at least one shot off, I think, before we can do anything about it, but that's not too bad. There's the shield up. Yeah! Alright, now we need to quickly knock out their helm. So let's get that charge laser into the helm. There we go. We're going to fry their weapons, helm, and empty room. Because why not? We need to stop them from running. Unfortunately, they didn't actually do enough damage. So, this is going to suck. Overshield is on now, but they're still going to escape in a second unless we can actually knock that helm offline. We need both of these shots to hit. There we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fry through there this time, are we? Yeah, I think that's still the best option. We need to actually knock out their helm, otherwise they will get away. They're trying to go do some repairs elsewhere, it looks like, but until we can get enough damage in there, they're going to be able to escape. Here comes another charge laser shot, which might be enough to stop them. I think we're actually okay here. Here come two more damage, and mini beam for the kill. Okay, that was lucky. Their destructor went down with very little damage done to us. The ship was carrying military supplies. We pick up anything that looks salvageable from the debris, getting a missile drone part and 23 scrap, which is quite nice. We're going to use that and immediately power up the O2 again, because we're back down to 50% air. Still no stores in sight, which is bad news. And I'll be back again once we have full oxygen again, so one moment. Alright, there we go. I apologize for all these interruptions, but if I wait through every single time we have no oxygen, it's going to take this forever. And, uh, not only that, but... If we don't have full oxygen, we jump into a fight, we will die, <laughs> basically, because we won't have the uh, the air necessary to be able to turn off our systems to power up our shield overcharger. And this is bad news for us. We detect a rebel scout on an attack approach to a small refueling outpost. The weapons are charged, but they're not firing yet. Let's intervene to defend the outpost, because we've got to. The rebel responds to our threat, saying, I don't know who you are, but no one defies a rebel fleet, and they move in to engage us. Alright, well, we have no option here but again to turn on the shield overcharger because they have a mini beam and a burst laser mark too, which is pretty mean, honestly, but whatever, we'll deal with it. We'll do what we can. Hopefully we can knock them for some pretty high damage here with our uh, mini beam charge laser combo. Knock them in the weapons quickly. Please do damage there. Nope, not fast enough. And here comes the hurt. We can't actually reach all of these rooms, I don't think, even if we reach right from the very corner there. Yeah, we can't get all of them. Not quite. Well, it's more important that we hit these shields and weapons, otherwise they're going to be able to hit us quite a bit harder. They've hit us in the helm, so our evasion is now neutralized, but we do only have a mini-beam left to deal with, so it's not the end of the world. We're going to ping a point of damage in the weapons, though, to turn off that mini-beam entirely, then we're going to ping another one of the shields to keep them down. We should be able to kill them without too much more damage. There we go. Helm is back up again, which is good, and the charge laser of the helm should kill them because they have no evasion. Perfect. Rebel fighter goes down, and we're powering up our O2 again. Ship breaks apart and we salvage what we can, getting three fuel, one drone part, and 16 scrap, and the outpost hails us, saying, The pompous bastards expected free service just because they defeated the Federation. Take this for the help, giving us four fuel and 15 scrap. Alright, well, we'll be back again when we have full air. <laughs> Isn't this exciting, guys? This ship is a disaster, but we have a ton of scrap now, so we can find a store. We might actually have a chance at survival here, so we'll be back in just a second. Filled up and good to go. All right, let's keep moving. Can we find a store somewhere before we run out of space entirely? If it's in that corner, I'll be super annoyed because we're not going to have room to get there before we get... <laughs> Nothing here. We jump into an unremarkable system with no life signs detected within scanning range. Is that a store? No, it's not. All right, well, we're not going to go there then. We're going to the exit and we're going to get out of Dodge. Hey, we arrive at Long Range Beacon where we find what appears to be a simple nebula is actually filled with a good amount of debris from brutal exchange between several ships. Wreckage just by our screens and tumbles into the depths of the nebula to be lost to sight. It's hard to determine who the combatants were without closer investigation. You'd think there was a be a nebula here if there's apparently a nebula, but apparently not. Let's investigate the battlefield. We scan the battlefield and find few remains. Disappointed, we prepare to jump. Alright, that's annoying. Let's jump onwards then. We have two options. Do we? Are you sure we have two options? <laughs> they look exactly the same to me. Alright, rock controlled sector or rock controlled sector. Let's go to rock controlled sector then and see what we can find over here. Get ourselves a bit more healing, which is good. The rock people have a particularly aggressive stance towards alien races trespassing in their space, and we should tread carefully here. Well, we have a store in sight. No, we do not. We do have a sun, though, so let's avoid that at all costs and see if we can get anything else done here before we get horribly murdered. So, we find a slug cruiser and a rock ship at a standoff, both with weapons armed and ready to fight. We could intervene before this gets out of hand. Let's hail them to see what's wrong. We have a rock crew and a slug crew, so we might be able to do something interesting. 
The slug captain explains that they upgraded the rock sh ship's reactor and other thick boulder heads refusing to pay for the work done. The rock captain says the slime balls did a poor job that is not worth the agreed upon price. Well, we could demand the rock ship pay the agreed upon price, or we could pay the debt, which we're not going to do. Let's demand the rock ship pay the agreed upon price. With much grumbling, the rock captain agrees to pay the price. And the slug captain offers a free reactor upgrade for our help. Never hurts to get a little power boost. Alright, well that's kind of nice. We got a free reactor upgrade out of that. That might actually be worthwhile upgrading our engines then while we're here. And we found another sun. Alright, they don't really want us to go anywhere here, do they? If we buy another engine upgrade, it only costs 30 scrap, so we can still easily buy other things. We'll do that to give ourselves a bit more toughness here. A bit harder to kill us, since we have a third of our hull left. In Sector 2, mind you. And here we go. A loud thud resounds through the ship after jump completion. We've just shunted a rock fighter, and he's already preparing to fire. Well, good. So, he has a heavy laser, which means we're going to need to power up our shield plus drone. They're going to be boarding us with the rock man, and they also have the glorious fun of a mini-beam. For a ship like this, mini-beams are basically a death sentence, which is annoying. But at least our defenses are up. And he missed us, which means we're only going to take one damage from the mini-beam, which is nice, too. Alright, let's knock over that weapon system if we can. Knock over the weapon system. Mini-beams are priority targets. Alright, and we're going to hit them in as many of these rooms as possible. That'll do. There we go. The rock ship moves into a defensive position and transmits a white flag signal, willing to buy their lives for a fuel, a drone part, and nine scrap. We don't accept their surrender and try and keep murdering them. Let's quickly change crew positions here. There we go. And he ran off. Cool. Back to your stations there, gentlemen. So, Charge Laser can keep knocking that shield system offline now, since there's not much they can do about it. It's also on fire, apparently, or it was. Not that that matters much to the Rockmen. And this should kill them. There we go. Rock Investigator goes down. Fantastic. That gives us one fuel, one drone part, and 17 scrap, which is marginally superior to what they offered us. I think. <laughs> I hope. Alright, do we see a store in sight? No, still no stores in sight here in the rock-controlled sector. We're going to repair our oxygen. I'll be right back. There we go. Alright, let's keep moving. We're looking for a store still. Let's jump over to this beacon and see if we can find one up ahead. Oh. As soon as we arrive, a small mantis ship detaches from a wreck and jumps away. We must have interrupted their salvage operation because we find a weapon ready to be installed. We find eight scrap and breach missiles, which are awesome. That's, like, very good selling power right here. One of the most powerful missile weapons in the game. That's awesome. Probably not going to wind up using them, but if we can sell them, we can get a lot of good out of them. There's a distress beacon right here. Let's go check out what they want, and then we'll see if we can keep finding a store somewhere. We're very, uh, very tenuously surviving right now. A ship without life forms within a nearby dense asteroid field is giving off the distress call. Of course, we're going to search the ship. Now, if this is the you take damage, it's going to bring us down to, like, five health, but hopefully it's not that. We find the decaying remains of some kind of ship coated with ice or crystal. We send some crew aboard to explore, and nearly everything is either destroyed or unidentifiable, but one of the weapons appears salvageable, and there's a strange stasis pod that catches our eye. Well, I wouldn't mind the stasis chamber, but right now we need weapons and scrap. So we're going to take the weapon and any spare scrap we can find. Our crew grabs what they can and returns to the ship before the asteroid hits. We get ten scrap and an ion charger. Alright, nothing amazing, but the ion charger will do. I think I'm going to equip that instead of the breach. It does take two power, so we can't really use it at the moment, but... It's something I have in our inventory, so hiccups are terrible. Something better than nothing. Let's jump to the chest beacon and see if one of these is a store. Hopefully it is. What do we find here? We arrive at the chest beacon near a small asteroid belt and find a ship with pirate markings partially crushed between two large rocks. It must have been illegally mining the belt without proper equipment, so let's carefully cut the ship out with our mini-beam. We use our beam to make a few precision cuts in the asteroid, and the ship gives a quick burst of thrust, and the rock crumbles away. They thank us and offer us one fuel, one missile, and 18 scrap as a reward. We're up to 201 scrap, still no stores to be found. Game, you really, you really gotta give me something here. I can't, <laughs> I can't handle this. All right, we can jump over here and then kind of circle around that way, maybe, and that'll give us a pretty good chance at finding something valuable. Let's go over this way and see what else we can do. We find a rock transport floating near the beacon. We consider stripping it of useful parts, but are uncertain why it's there in the first place. Let's use our slug crew to check for life forms and keep a lookout for ships while looting the wreck. We begin the salvage operation before long our crew warns us of an approaching ship. We hasten to leave before they get within firing range, giving us a missile, a drone part, and only nine scrap. Oh, so that's interesting. It means we didn't get to fight anything else, instead of potentially getting to fight something and making better profit. Weird. Well, our alter- our alter- our blah 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 our alternatives right now are to buy more upgrades with our 210 scrap, which might be a good idea to keep us alive. Um... Probably more evasion would be our option for 60 scrap. It leaves us 150, not quite enough to power up everything we want later if we get shields. We can buy shields that come with two power bars, which is better than nothing. 
I guess we're gonna go for the power and the engines because it's all we can literally do to survive and we'll hold on to the 150 scrap in case we can actually find a store that lets us buy the shield system. There's gotta be one in here somewhere. There is a single ship at this beacon. They hail us, saying, We could really use some help. Our FTL navigation system's shot. Can you help us get to a nearby station where they can patch us up? Sure. You can have three fuel. Or no, they're giving us three fuel. Great. Take this bit of fuel as a down payment. We'll be one step behind you, following your jump signatures. Don't want to take any risks now, do we? All right, hopefully... Okay, good. So hopefully this quest begins right there. Is that an asteroid field? It is. Okay, well, we can't go there now. That's bad news. It kind of messes up my plans. Hopefully there's a store here. Nope. We escort the ship to the Quested Beacon, and much to our dismay, we're ambushed by a rebel ship. We walked right into their trap. You guys are jerks. Alright, time to power off everything, turn on the Shield Plus drone to defend against the heavy laser, and then try and smack them around before they can do anything else to us. At least this ship is in a nice layout for actually dealing damage to them pretty quickly. There goes the heavy laser shot blocked. Fantastic. We're going to fire our first charge laser here to hopefully block off the chain. And mini beam to deal some damage, knocking out the chain laser, hopefully. Yes, good. Now we should be okay here. We should be able to beat these guys without taking any damage at this point. Which is good, because otherwise we're going to keep dying. Which is not what we want. And it looks like our, uh, our shield actually survived that hit, which is extra nice. Alright, let's lay down some more damage on them again. And mini beam right through there. Go lasers, go! Perfect, we knocked out all the systems again. The shields are now actually offline, so we can fire the charge laser much more liberally now. We'll turn off the shield drone and turn the O2 back on. There we go. Charge laser shots again to make them sure they can't get away. And there we go, mini beam kills the rebel fighter. So, ship explodes, giving us one fuel, two missiles, and 17 scrap. But now we're stuck in a dead end. We cannot afford to go to that asteroid field. We have to go back the way we came, otherwise we're going to take a bazillion damage. So that's unfortunate. Let's jump over this way, then we can jump to the exit. We're going to lose a little bit of time in the sector, but there's not much we can do about that now. We detect two ships here, one chasing the other. Scanners show the pursuers a pirate, so obviously we aid the civilian ship. We power up weapons and engage the pirate, and they're moderately well equipped. We're going to power up our, obviously, our uh, shield our shield plus drone. We don't really have any alternatives here. And we're still very poorly equipped. <laughs> we have 167 scrap, which is not bad, but really... Really, we're just in so much trouble right now. Alright, let's fire this. They hit us in the helm, that's annoying, but not the end of the world, because we should be able to hit them for a good amount of damage here. I said, good amount of damage here, there we go, there's the four damage hit. Doesn't knock out the heavy laser, but doesn't knock out the small one, which is good enough, I suppose, because it should turn on in time to block this laser, there we go. And now we should be able to get enough damage in there to stop them from being able to repair it fully. Fire the charge laser again, perfect. And we'll fire up through here, getting another four damage on them, which means you only have to hit them one more time. And since nobody's on the helm, that shouldn't be too hard. We should be pretty well set here. Turn off the shield drone, turn our systems back online. They have one weapon online, but we should be okay here with two shots and nobody on the helm. This should kill them. Perfect. There goes the pirate bomber. And... Uh, Ship breaks apart, letting us gather one missile, one drone part, and 19 scrap. When we contact the civilian ship, it finds that their crew did not survive the assault. We take a missile, a drone part, and 7 scrap, and continue on regardless, though. So, we have 193 scrap again, still no stores in the first two sectors, which is really bad luck. We've arrived at the long-range beacon, what do we find here? Civilian colonists, loyal to the rebel cause, are present on a nearby planet. It looks like they're currently receiving a supply shipment, and it could be useful. We can attack the rebels, we can wait and steal the supplies from the civilians, or we can leave them be. I think we're going to wait and steal the supplies from the civilians, because we're terrible people. The colonists willingly give up the supplies, but as we make way to jump away, an explosion rocks our ship. The cargo is booby-trapped, we take two damage. Well, that's annoying. It also sets our O2 on fire and breaks the system, which is mean. Alright, fair enough, I guess I should have just attacked the rebels, we probably could have gotten a better reward from doing that. But I was kind of hoping we'd be able to get something without having to fight for it, because really, we're really bad at fighting right now. With our O2 back online, I should really wait and let us regenerate, because if we jump much further like this, we're going to die. But at least for the moment, we're going to put ourselves back in positions and jump to the next sector. We've made it to Sector 3 in this disaster of a ship. Civilian Sector is the obvious choice here. It has a higher chance of stores than the Uncharted Nebula does. So we're going to head over there and see if we can maybe turn this thing around. Here we go. We arrive in a new sector, we have to get to the exit beacon and jump to the next before the rebe pursuing rebels can catch us, rather. But for now, we're going to have to end our episode here. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor, an absolute catastrophe of a ship here, the VSS High Noon. If we can manage to make it any further, I will be very, very surprised. But we'll do our best to make it as far as we can. So I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Until then, bye bye